Hey, Rockwin Swana here, and thank you for dropping by. Well, this is actually quite a serious video for a change. Imagine watching Sixth Sense for the first time, and if the video blurb actually mentioned the last screen, or maybe knowing who Kaiser Soze is before watching Usual Suspect. So first, let's watch the following clip from a gameplay of what happened to Edith Flinch, and then I can get back to the actual content. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery, but he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to wander. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small, imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination, so he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor, and he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality.
Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a handsome queen. The queen was on her own quest for sinister serpents. He followed the sound of her electric sitar. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me hard to argue with him. He began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who had insisted on advising him.
the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Well, let's not beat around the bush anymore. I'm talking about depression. Now it affects all of us, both male and female. But today, I'll be focusing on male depression for obvious reason. Depression can affect men and women differently. About 10% to 17% of men will develop major depression at some point in their lives. Yet, many men are reluctant to convey their feelings and seek help when they are in despair. In men, depression often masquerades as some other problem, such as drinking too much, becoming argumentative, or even doing a lot of overtime at work. As a result, the problem may go undiagnosed and untreated and can have devastating consequences. Men tend to use different coping skills, both healthy and unhealthy, than women do. It isn't clear why we may experience depression differently. It likely involves a number of factors, including brain chemistry, hormones, and life experiences. Like women with depression, men with depression may feel sad, hopeless, or empty, feel extremely tired, have difficulty sleeping or sleep too much, not get pleasure from activities usually enjoyed. Other behaviors in men that could be sign of depression, but not recognized as such, include escapist behavior, such as spending a lot of time at work or on sports, physical symptoms such as headaches, digestive problems and pain, problems with alcohol and drug use, controlling violent and abusive behavior, irritability or inappropriate anger, risky behavior such as reckless driving. Because these behaviors could be sign of or might overlap with other mental health issues or may be associated with medical conditions, professional help is the key to an accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment. Men with depression often aren't diagnosed for several reasons, including failure to recognize depression. One may think that feeling sad or emotional is always the main symptom of depression. But for many men, that isn't the primary symptom. For example, headaches, digestive problems, tiredness, irritability, or long-term pain can sometimes indicate depression. So can feeling isolated and seeking distraction to avoid dealing with feelings or relationships. Then there is downplaying signs and symptoms. We may not recognize how much our symptoms affect us or we may not want to admit to ourselves or to anyone else that we are depressed. But ignoring, suppressing or masking depression with unhealthy behavior will only worsen the negative emotions. We are also reluctant to discuss depression symptoms. We may not be open to talking about our feelings with family or friends, let alone with a doctor or mental health professional. Like many men, one may have learned to emphasize self-control. We may think it's not manly to express feelings and emotions associated with the depression and we try to suppress them. Finally, resisting mental health treatment. Even if we suspect we have depression, we may avoid diagnosis or refuse treatment. We may avoid getting help because we are worried that the stigma of depression could damage your career or cause family and friends to lose respect for us. Which leads us to suicide. Although women attempt suicide more often than men do, men are more likely to complete suicide. That's because men normally use methods that are more likely to cause death, such as guns. Also, we may act more impulsively on suicidal thoughts and we show fewer warning signs, such as talking about suicide. Asking for help can be hard for men, but without treatment, depression is unlikely to go away and it may get worse. Untreated depression can make us 
and the people close to us miserable. It can cause problems in every aspect of our life, including our health, career, relationships, and personal safety. Depression, even if it's severe, usually improves with medications or psychological counseling, or both. If you or someone close to you thinks you may be depressed, talk to your doctor or a mental health professional. It's a sign of strength to ask for advice or seek help when you need it. Now, some people immediately assume that depression is the result of low self-esteem. Honestly, I have no clue how they come to that conclusion. The four major causes of depression are family history, though there are no specific genes that we can look at and trace to depression. If your family members have had depression, you are more likely also to experience depression. Then illness and health issues that can have a significant impact on your mental health. Followed by medication, drugs and alcohol, as many different medications can have the unfortunate side effect of depression. Finally, we have personality. Some people and personalities are just more apt to experience depression. For example, people who tend to hold in worries and stress have low self-esteem, are perfectionist, and are sensitive to criticism are naturally more likely to be depressed. In addition to those causes, various life events can increase one's chance of being depressed. Example of events like this include losing job, being in a dysfunctional relationship, stress at work, isolation, going through a breakup or divorce, being diagnosed with an illness, being unemployed for a long time, grieving a loved one, and so on. Personally, I have been suffering from depression for over 9 years. It took me several years to finally admit to myself what was going on. And during that whole period, I almost turned into a hermit living on whiskey and cannabis from waking up till going to bed. Thankfully, the only time I had suicidal thought is when I walked over a frozen river. I have some good friends who did help me through those dark days, and they still do. From my experience, just like an alcoholic, the first step is to admit to yourself regarding the situation. It's important to remember that a person with depression cannot simply snap out of it. It is also important to know that he may not recognize his symptoms and may not want to get professional treatment. If you think someone has depression, you can support him by helping him find a doctor or mental health professional and then helping him make an appointment. Even men who have trouble recognizing that they are depressed may agree to seek help for physical symptoms, such as feeling tired or run down. They may be willing to talk to their regular health professional about a new difficulty they are having at work or losing interest in doing things they usually enjoy. Talking to a primary care provider may be a good first step towards learning about and treating possible depression. Men with depression are at risk for suicide. If you or someone you know is in crisis, please get help quickly by calling a doctor, call emergency services, go to the nearest hospital emergency room, even call National Suicidal Prevention Lifeline at your country. Here is where I'll end this video for today. It is a dark subject matter. There is nothing to enjoy. But if you did find it informative, maybe you can like the video and share it around. Let me know what you think in the comment section below if you or someone close to you had similar experience. Thank you so much for watching. Wherever you are, have a safe and happy life. Signing off.